Hey there. I offer this podcast freely. Your support really makes a difference. To make a donation, visit ReneeMcKenna.com. Welcome to Spiritual Psychology. My name is Renee LaValle McKenna, and I bring my 30-plus years as a recovering addict and ex-crazy person turned therapist and shamanic healer to bring you snackable teachings on spirituality, psychology, and all things personal growth. And today I want to talk about gods and demons. And I've come to really like the term demon. I've discovered it through the work of a teacher that I refer to often, Lama Tsultramalioni of Taramandala in Colorado, and her really potent work using ancient Buddhist techniques to dissolve our inner suffering. And she's trademarked that work, Feeding Your Demons. You can find information about it on YouTube. And she has a book by the same name that I was looking over the other day as I'm teaching these processes to my mentorship clients. We're a little more than halfway through my year-long mentorship program. Really amazing and eclectic group of deep and dedicated practitioners seeking to clarify and develop their own superpowers in the world and how to bring these very deep and transformative practices of spiritual psychology into their own work. And we've been working with negative energy extraction, known in shamanism as depossession, or in the Judeo-Christian traditions as exorcism. And historically, it was kind of understood that we were separate from God and separate from the devil or the darkness or the demons. And so the difficulties in our life were looked at as possessing entities. And there's actually still a lot of value in that perspective if we update it and include what we know about psychology, self-responsibility, and our own agency in the world and bringing light into our own inner darkness, our own devils and demons, is some of the most important work that we do. And a lot of those demons do visit us from the outside world first, it seems. The demon of abuse, of neglect, of selfishness, greed, dishonesty, ignorance, fear. There's tremendous suffering in the world. Myriad forms you can turn on almost any form of media and find exponential suffering worldwide. And we don't have to look across the world to find deep suffering. We can look within our families, our friends, our work lives, and probably find a long list of people who are suffering or imposing suffering on others with addiction, financial distress, worry, control issues, unrealistic expectations, taking too much responsibility or not enough responsibility. Physical suffering, mental illness, sexual dysfunction, loneliness. These are the modern demons. And although they're very evident in the external world, the most important place that we can seek to bring light into the darkness, to exercise demons, is within ourselves. And we all have them. And it's often much easier to see them in others, or to be outraged by the injustice of the world, or terrified by its dangers rather than to turn that focus into our own psyches and souls and do some house cleaning there. And my experience is, just like house cleaning, this is not something that you do once, it's something that needs to be done in perpetuity. Dust collects and spiders build webs even in rooms that are unused. And our external world can be an excellent mirror for our internal world. If you have unpacked boxes from the last time you moved or storage units that you haven't visited in ages that you're still paying for, it's not unlikely you have unresolved emotional issues that haven't been unpacked or old attachments and suffering that remain stored away, gently draining your energy in monthly payments. I have intense hoarding on my father's side of the family and don't actually believe in storage for the most part. For this very reason, I do believe in savings, and there's no hard and fast rules, but storage is different than savings. And there are things that want to be saved, but if we're storing something, we want to really look at what that's about. What are we keeping and why? Because unknowingly, we often store our suffering. And depending on what it is, it can rot and fester in our basement, in our storage unit, and deplete or deteriorate us on an emotional, spiritual level that we're unconscious about. All the crap we stuff into the back of the metaphorical closet of our own inner world. 
I did a recent episode on feeding your demons, number 145. So I won't go too much more deeply into that, except to say that resolving our unresolved emotional issues will shift, transform, and elevate our lives in unimaginable and positive ways. And good therapy, spiritual practice, and community, even the physical act of clearing out old stuff, will move you forward along that path. But there's a Buddhist perspective that I was reminded of when I was rereading the Feeding Your Demons book in preparation for my mentorship class recently. And that's the idea of gods and demons, or gods as demons. And this is a wisdom perspective that is under-addressed in the modern Western conversation of personal growth. And gods are things that we worship, places we source power. They motivate, strengthen, protect, and support us, our gods. And there are authentic gods and goddesses, and there are false gods and goddesses. And they can be just as distracting, depleting, and destructive as the obvious demons in our life. And the Ten Commandments points to this in the commandment, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And our own personal spiritual development is about continuing to expand, to surrender to, and to grow in our ability to align with truly higher consciousness. And if we're talking about a relationship with the infinite, that is an infinite process. And spiritual practice, spiritual seeking itself can become a false god. Perhaps the most obvious shadow side of religion can be seen in fundamentalists who justify hate, persecution, or exile in the name of purity and whatever their religious practice is. I recently spent some time with a wonderful creative man who was raised Mormon, did a two-year mission, which Mormons do after they graduate high school. You go and proselytize Mormonism in some foreign city going door-to-door carrying your little book and your little shirt and tie. But he happens to be gay, and you can't be gay and a Mormon. And he had to make a decision. Was he going to get married to a woman and live a fake life, or maybe have a double life? Was he going to kill himself, or was he going to be exiled from his community and his family? Horrible choice. I know another young man who was exiled from his family, and expelled from Brigham Young University, that's the Mormon University in Utah, when his gay lover was discovered, and he did try to kill himself. Luckily, he didn't succeed, but this more recent friend got the blessing of his mother, who told him, I would rather have you alive and living your real life than be dead and pretending to be a Mormon. And bless that woman, she was able to supersede the human-created false god of the church and get in touch with the deeper principles of unconditional love, compassion, and radical acceptance. And although I find tremendous support, guidance, connection, and love in the gods and goddesses of my own life, the authentic gods of Kali, Mary, Jesus, the spirit of nature, my experiences, authentic spiritual connection is always challenging me to grow, and it's always pushing me just a little outside my comfort zone. Not that we shouldn't be comfortable, cared for, supported, filled with abundance, but if I have everything all wrapped up with a neat bow and I'm very self-satisfied, it's not unlikely the false gods of pride, self-justification, laziness, or self-satisfaction have crept in to justify my own stagnancy or maybe even to distract me from some of my own shadows that I don't really want to look at or take responsibility for. And although the seven deadly sins may not be something we talk about very much in modern culture, many of them are these false gods. And we actually worship a lot of these false gods in the West today. And the problem with false gods is that they actually create demons. They create suffering. So just a reminder, the seven deadlies are pride, greed, lust, envy, gluttony, wrath, and sloth. And it's interesting to consider what's the difference between pride and self-esteem. Greed isn't even the thing we talk about. In fact, we've elevated it as an aspiration for most people, seeking infinite wealth, more than we need. Pride tells us we're perfect just the way we are and there's nothing we need to work on within ourselves. So there's no personal growth going to happen there. 
We'll often even elevate ourselves over others, which in itself is a demon. Pride often holds judgment, criticism, self-justification, and it's usually a mask for a whole bunch of fear and lack of humility. Greed is a bottomless pit of need, never satisfied, willing to harm others for its own expansion. Lust, envy, and gluttony are next on the list, and certainly with the proliferation of porn, instant sex apps, and dating sites, it's easy to get caught up and have access to instant sexual or attention gratification, or at least seeking it, the fantasy of it, that's devoid of any spiritual, emotional, or soul connection. It's devoid of love. Sex without love is lust. And it's a false god. And false gods create or hide demons or suffering. There's also the false god of relationship, looking for another person to fulfill our spiritual needs or to make us feel worthy. We could even make our marriage and our children false gods through over-dependence on those relationships or the ego gratification that they give us and our sense of value in the world. Envy could be seen as ambition, wanting what others have, rather than being grateful that we have enough right now in our own lives. And almost all of us, if we really look deeply, we do, right now, have everything we need in this moment. And envy is when I'm judging my insides by somebody else's outsides. Gluttony like greed never has enough. How many pairs of black pants or white t-shirts are in your drawers or closets? Do you compulsively overeat unhealthy foods? And gluttony speaks to a deeper hunger. Am I a glutton for likes or comments on social media? I liken it to being an alcoholic. I didn't drink because I was thirsty. There was never enough to fill that inner thirst. And gluttony is trying to consume, to fill a deeper hole that can never be filled by the substance that it seeks. The false gods of prestige, consumerism, power, attention. Wrath and sloth are the last two on the list. Wrath being revenge or justified anger. Outrage, that may be at ourselves, our own self-hatred and self-criticism. Maybe to those in our life that we judge, have resentments against, where do we have unforgiveness or a lack of compassion and understanding in the larger world, always focused on the injustice, on the evils, on what needs to be changed. Now, I am a social justice warrior. Anger is a tremendous source of power, and it's a lower power. And Jesus Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King, the true and great change creators of social justice in the world and in our history, power and the progress that they created was to elevate consciousness with deep compassion and love as the source. So the false god of justified anger, it's one of my personal favorites. And finally, sloth, procrastination, which I like to say is fear in five syllables, procrastination. Where have we lost our mojo, given up, no longer participating in our own life process? Where do we distract ourselves rather than actually being in the flow of our own authentic life? Am I spending hours scrolling Instagram rather than working on my artwork? Do I spend every night eating dinner in front of the TV with my partner, not having the difficult conversation about why we haven't had sex in months? Am I actually planning that trip to Thailand or working on that unwritten book or applying for that training program or new job? Or have I exhausted myself by overworking or even taking care of the needs with others and under-addressing my own authentic needs and life path? Sloth can be tricky. My own sloth fear avoidance often justifies itself by overextending myself in unimportant areas of my life. And so I encourage you to look at the demons and false gods in your own life. Where are you looking to find your value and worth or to medicate or avoid your own authentic suffering? Where are you looking to justify your own worth and value as a person in places that can't do that? Where are you seeking to avoid or distract or medicate authentic suffering that needs attention, calling you to grow?
And when we face our demons and release our false gods, we can connect with the true universal power that exists both within and without us in infinite measure that is the best path to our own joy and fulfillment. Thank you so much for listening. If you like this podcast, consider five stars on Spotify or a good review on iTunes. You can click the link in the show notes for a free download from my book, Allies and Demons, Working with Spirit for Power and Healing. I'm doing lives again on Insight Timer. I have a bunch of great events coming up in November. The link to my Insight Timer profile is also in the show notes. And if you want to find out more about my year-long mentorship program or how a block of spiritual psychology work might benefit you in your life, drop me an email, info at ReneeMcKenna.com. And thank you for the generous donations and to my supporters on Patreon. Blessings on your path until we meet again. This is Renee LaValle McKenna for Spiritual Psychology.